The first step in our data science process is acquiring data. After this video, you will be able to list techniques and technologies to access and retrieve the data you need, and describe an example scenario that accesses data from a variety of sources using different technologies. As I said, the first step is acquire the data. That means you need to obtain the source material before analyzing or acting on it. The first step in acquiring data is determining what data is available. When it comes to finding the right data sources, we try to leave no stone unturned. You want to identify suitable data related to your problem and make use of all data that is relevant to your problem for analysis. Sometimes, leaving out even a small amount of important data can lead to incorrect conclusions. Data comes from many places, local and remote, in many varieties, structured and unstructured, and in many different velocities that re re uh, refers to the streaming speed of the data. There are many techniques and technologies to access these different types of data. Let's discuss a few examples. A lot of data exists in conventional relational databases, like structured data coming from organizations. The tool of choice to access data from databases is stru Structured Query Language, or SQL, which is supported by all relational database management systems. Additionally, most database systems come with a graphical application environment that allows you to query and explore the data sets in the database. Data can also exist in files such as text files and Excel spreadsheets. Scripting languages are generally used to get data from files. A scripting language, like Python, is a high-level programming language that can be general purpose or specialized for specific functions. You'll see Unix scripting and some Python in week two. In addition, throughout this class, we will be using Python in all of our case studies and examples. Next week, we'll review Python, and in week three, you'll start learning Python libraries and functions related to text processing. Other common scripting languages with support for processing files are JavaScript, PHP, Perl, R, Octave, and MATLAB, to name a few. An increasingly popular way to get data is from websites. Web pages are written using a set of standards approved by World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C. This includes a variety of formats and services. One common format is XML, or Extensible Markup Language, or JSON, which both use markup symbols and tabs to describe the contents on a web page. Many websites also host web services which provide programmatic access to their data. There are several types of web services, the most popular one being REST, since it's easy to use. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and it is an approach for implementing web services with performance, scalability, and maintainability in mind. WebSocket services are also becoming more popular since they allow real-time notifications from the websites. NoSQL storage systems are increasingly used to manage a variety of data types. These data stores are databases that do not represent data in a table format with columns or rows as with conventional relational databases. Examples of these data stores include Cassandra, MongoDB, and HBase. NoSQL data stores provide APIs to allow users to access the data. These APIs can be used directly or in an application that needs to access the data, like a Python script. Additionally, most NoSQL systems provide data access via a web interface, such as REST. In one application from our work at the San Diego Supercomputer Center, we use wildfire data analysis to predict fire direction and rate of spread. This project requires acquiring data using several different mechanisms. The project itself stores historical sensor data from weather stations in a relational database. We use SQL to retrieve this data from the database to create models to identify weather patterns associated with 
fire weather conditions to determine whether a particular weather station is currently experiencing fire weather conditions we access real-time data using a WebSocket service. Once we start listening to the service, we receive weather station measurements as they occur. This data is then processed and compared to patterns found by our models to determine if a weather station is experiencing Santa Ana conditions or fire weather conditions. At the same time, tweets are retrieved using hashtags related to any fires that are occurring in the region. The tweet messages are retrieved using the Twitter REST service. The idea is to determine the sentiment of these tweets to see if people are expressing fear, anger, or simply nonchalant about the nearby fire. The combination of sensor data and tweet sentiments helps to give us a sense of the urgency of the fire situation. To summarize, data can come from many places. Finding and evaluating all useful data to our analytics is important before we start acquiring data. Depending on the source and structure of the data, there are alternative ways to access it, and we'll see all about these access methods throughout the coming weeks in Python.